After seeing an edit of your favorite movie character, you decide to make one yourself. So you go ahead, install After Effects and open it up. Only to see this huge interface. What is all of this? Why does it look so confusing? If only there was someone who could help me. Well, don't worry because today I will show you step by step how you can make this exact fan edit of your favorite character so you can start going viral. All we need to start is our clips, sound and of course After Effects. Once you open up After Effects, you will be met with this screen and the first thing we have to do is create our project. So go ahead and click on New composition and in here we have to set our composition settings. The resolution will decide in what format our edit is and because in my case I want this nice square look I'm gonna go for 1080 by 1080. Obviously there's so many different resolutions you can pick from for example 1920 by 1080, 1450 by 1080 or like in this case 1080 by 1080. Which one you choose is up to you. Next we have to set our frame rate which will decide how much FPS our edit has. In here we want to go for the highest possible value because it will make our edit look the smoothest. The highest value you can use for social media is 60 because anything past that won't be pro Processed. And lastly, the duration, meaning how long our edit is, I'm gonna put to 30 seconds. Once that's done, press on OK and you will see this preview. Obviously, right now it's black because we don't have our footage imported. And to change that, we're gonna head to the top and click on File. Then click on to Import and select File again. And now you have to select the scene pack and sound you wanna use for your edit. Once you select the both, click on to Import and they should appear in our project panel. From here on, we can just drag them onto our timeline. And as you can see, our clips are now visible. And by the way, if you can't find scene packs, I would suggest you searching on Instagram or Discord, wherever you want. I will also leave you the ones I use in the description. The first actual editing step inside After Effects is going to be marking our beat drops because obviously later when our editing part starts we want to have the clips change accordingly to the music otherwise it would look offbeat and to do that we're going to disable the sound of our scene pack layer then right click onto our sound go to keyframe assistant and click on convert audio into keyframes. As you can see it will create this new red layer we can click on it once and then press E on our keyboard. This will bring up all these keyframes and from these keyframes we can read where our beat drops. Only thing we got to do is click onto the both channels slider and then open up the graph editor. As you can see, this will bring up all these spikes. And don't worry, it looks more confusing than it actually is. What this tells us is that everywhere we have a spike, there's a beat drop in our audio. So I'm going to go ahead to where my audio starts, which is right here. Then I'm going to zoom in. And as you can see, this will be our first beat drop. And because remembering where the beat drop is located is going to be pretty hard, I'm going to mark the beat drop so we can easily access it later on. All we got to do for that is head to the right and click onto this button right here. As you can see, this will create a numbered marker. And now we can just go ahead to the next spike, which will be right here. Very important, always make sure your time indicator is aligned with the exact place you want to put your marker at and then click back onto this button. As you can see now we have number two and we're going to continue this process until we marked all of our beat drops. Once that's done your timeline should look something like this and we can now close the graph editor again and delete this top layer because we don't need it anymore. Next thing you may realize is that the clips that we use are super zoomed in. This is because our composition doesn't match the resolution of our scene packs which is totally normal to fix that just click onto the clip then press s on your keyboard and decrease or increase this value until it fits. As you can see for me the value 68 is pretty convenient. Now that we know where our beat drops are located the next step is going to be actually finding the scenes that we want to use because obviously we can't switch the scenes on the beat drops if we don't have any scenes and to do that we're going to double click onto our scene pack layer right here and if we zoom out you can see it will bring up this extra preview we can see the clips in here and then right below we have this extra timeline on this extra small timeline you will see a second small time indicator and by clicking onto it we can drag it ahead to scatter the whole scene pack and find the scene that we want to use for our edit in my case i want to use this scene right here of batman and once you position the small time marker on the small timeline we can go to this bracket and click on it once as you can see if we look back on our main timeline our scene pack got cut to the exact place in time so now when we play ahead we will have the exact scene we just picked from our scene pack and this is our intro scene meaning it's going to be the longest playing in the beginning of our edit i also personally want this clip to be the first clip i edit with so i'm going to go ahead to the second time marker where we want the intro to end again and then cut the layer by pressing ctrl shift and d as you can see we now have two layers the first one is just going to be our intro and on the second one we can now start finding the clips for our editing part so double click back onto it and then again use the time indicator to go ahead till you find the next scene you want to use in my case this scene looks pretty nice click back onto the bracket and it will cut to the exact place on your timeline now this clip will be way shorter than our intro so just go ahead to the third time marker right here and cut it again by pressing ctrl shift and d like before we're going to repeat this process until we find all the clips we want to use for our edit once we found all the clips we can close this preview layer by clicking onto the x on the top and it will bring us back to our main composition the next step that a lot of people forget is adjusting the clips what i mean by that is as you can see right now our character is kind of tilted to the left and we obviously want the face of our character to be in the center of our screen and when you go through your edit you will notice that there's certain clips you really really need to change and other ones that are not that important because they're already quite in the center and to align our clips all we need to do is press p on our keyboard which will bring up the positioning on the left and then for every clip starting at the first one we can increase or decrease the value on the left to move it to the center right or left and always make sure you put the face of the character into the center of the screen again repeat this process for all the clips and when it comes to the intro it's going to be a bit tricky because as you may notice we have different camera angles meaning if we were to place this character into the center of the screen 
screen, the other ones won't fit into it, as you can see. And to fix that, we're going to use our time indicator to go ahead to wherever our clip changes. As you can see right here, the camera position changes. And we're going to cut our intro layer at that exact frame by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and D. That way, we isolate the different camera positions. So make sure you cut your intro layer every time the camera changes by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and D. And like before, to adjust the position of our intro layers, we're just going to press P and then center them to the middle of the screen, like this. Once we're done centering all the clips in our edit, it's going to get interesting because it's time to add the first effects. Just two quick settings to make our edit look smoother with effects, which first is going to be selecting all the clips at once by pressing Shift. And then we're going to enable Motion Blur, which is this button right here. And then Frame Blending by clicking on this one twice. So it looks like this. This will just make the overall edit a bit smoother. And next thing we're going to do is isolate all the clips by pre-composing them. So go to the first beat drop right here. And now it's also time to separate the intro from the first editing clip. And now we're going to right click, go to pre-compose. Make sure you select the bottom option and then also enable this check mark. And if you press on OK, you can see our clip will change color and be isolated. We need to do this for all the layers, which will not just make it a bit easier adding the effects, but it will also clean up your workspace. Again, do this for all the clips, including your intro. And now it's time to add our first effect, which is called Twixter. Twixter will basically create a smooth velocity and make our clips bend together a bit smoother. To apply the effect, go to effects and presets on the right and then search for Twixter. Select the one that's called Twixter Pro. And if you can't find this effect inside your After Effects, you can get it from the Discord server in the description. Once you found it, drag it onto the first clip. Very important, not the intro. And that should open up the effect controls of your clip. As you can see, it now says Twixter Pro in here, and we have a lot of settings we can change. Start by disabling the check mark next to in FPS as out FPS, and then replace the input frame rate with whatever frame rate your clips have. If you want to check that, just click onto your project, then select your scene pack, and it should say right here 23.976 FPS. So go back to your effect controls panel and fill it in right here 23.976. Next, for the image prep, we're going to put contrast. The frame interpolation, we're going to put from blend to motion weighted blend. And lastly, the warping from inverse to inverse with smart blend. After adjusting the settings, we now have to set the keyframes for the actual slow motion animation. So zoom in a bit, then go to the first frame of your clip and set a keyframe for the speed percentage by clicking onto this clock. Put the value from 100 up to 200, then press U and it should bring up this keyframe. Next, we're gonna go to approximately the middle of the clip, which should be about here, and put the speed from 200 down to 60. Lastly, we're gonna go to the end and put the speed back up to 200. Your clip should look like this now with three keyframes. And to make this animation a bit smoother, we're gonna add a graph. Graphs basically allow us to change the speed in which the animation is playing. So select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Then we can open the graph editor again. And after zooming in a bit, we can adjust this graph to how we want it to be. And in this case, we want the animation to be fast. So click onto the graph once and then start by dragging this left handle all the way down. The handle on the bottom, we're going to drag towards it. So a bit to the left, not all the way though. And then for the right side, we're going to mirror this behavior. So start with the bottom one and drag it to the right about the same amount. And the top one, again, we're going to drag straight down. And that's how we did our slow motion. So you can now exit the graph editor again. And next up, we want to add this cool zoom in. This time, our effect is called S underscore blur more curves. So go back to your effects and presets and search for S underscore blur more curves. Again, if you cannot find it, you can get it from the Discord server in the description. Drag it onto the same layer, but below the Twixter effect. Then put your time indicator at the beginning of the clip and set a keyframe for the Z distance and leave the value at one. Now go to the end of the clip, the very last frame and put the value from one to 0.5. As you can see, if we preview the clip, it will zoom in a lot, but we obviously don't want the zoom to zoom in on his neck. What we want instead is to zoom onto his face. So we're going to go to the center X and Y and decrease the Y value till it's on his face. So about this much. Now when you preview, you can see the zoom is zooming in on his face. But again, we're going to want to change the animation of this to make it a bit faster. Press U on your keyboard and select the new keyframes we just created. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. Then open the graph editor. And this time the graph is going to look a bit different. Start by clicking onto the top handle and then drag it down, but keep it a bit tilted to the right. Go to the bottom one and do the opposite. So drag it up, but keep it a bit tilted to the left. The faster you want the animation to be, the further you can drag these handles down. But I would recommend to not go for too much. After you set your graph, we can close the graph editor and we now have our effects done. We obviously don't want these effects just to be on one clip, but we want them to be on our entire edit. And don't worry, you don't have to do this over and over again. We can just copy and paste. So select all the keyframes we just created and then click onto the S underscore blur more curves effect name. Press Ctrl and C on your keyboard and then move your time indicator to the beginning of the next clip. Make sure you select the right clip and then press Ctrl and V. Now when we press U, you can see we have all the keyframes in the same position that we copied them. Only thing you want to watch out for is if they're a bit stretched like this, you're going to select all of them, hold down Alt on your keyboard and then drag them to the right until they fit your clip. Again, repeat this process for all your clips so you have a nice unity. Once that's done, our editing part already looks pretty cool. So next up, we're going to do the intro. And you better listen up because this is the most important part of your edit. Obviously, we want to add a text to what our characters are saying. So get your headphones and now we're going to have to listen to what they actually say. Chris. 
This is Harvey Dent. As you can see, the first two sentences are Bruce. This is Harvey Dent. So now our text has to say exactly that. To create our text, we're going to go to the top and select the text tool. Now we can click onto our composition and type in whatever we just heard. In this case, Bruce. If you want to change the size and font of your text, you can double click and make sure it's all selected and then head to the character panel. In my case, I like the Arial Bold font and the text size is going to be 40. And of course, we don't want our text floating on his nose. So we're going to select the text layer, open our align panel and then align our text to the center of the screen. To signalize that this is a good edit and not just some CapCut template, we're also going to add some effects to the text layer. So go back to effects and presets and search for bevel alpha. Drag it onto the text layer and put the edge thickness from 2 to 1. Next, search for deep glow, drag it below the bevel alpha effect and put the exposure from 1 to 0.3. Lastly, we're going to search for drop shadow, drag it onto the text layer, put the opacity from 50 to 100, the distance from 5 to 0 and the softness from 0 to 100. As you can see, this will just make our text look a bit better. And now get your headphones back because we have to change what the character is saying. If we listen to it, this is Harvey Dent. You can see about here on my timeline, the next sentence is being spoken. So right here, I want to cut my text layer and change the text. Something that's also pretty helpful is selecting your intro clip and then pressing L twice on your keyboard. As you can see, it will bring up this waveform. And now if we zoom in, we can see a bit more clear when the character starts speaking. So about here before the spike happens. So go back to your text layer and cut it by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Now all that's there to do is select the text layer and replace it with what our character is saying now. Again, make sure you do this for all your intro and every sentence that's spoken. Once that's done, you will realize it's starting to get messy on your timeline but don't worry, we'll fix it later. Only thing you may realize now after you edit your text is that it looks pretty stiff. You can see all of it is just plain white. And to bring in some color, which in my case I want to do for the first word. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the word by double clicking onto it. And then we're going to go back to the character panel. And here you will see this big white box on the right. So click on it once. And once that's opened, you can select whatever color you want your text to be in. In my case, a bright blue, something like this. Press on OK. And you can see your text color has been changed to blue. Another thing that I think would look cool is having this nice outline text effect. To do that one, we're going to select the text we want to outline. Line, and then again, go to the character panel and click onto this arrow next to the box. As you can see, our text is now outlined. And if you want it to be a bit thicker, we can put the stroke size up. Or if you want it thinner, we can put it down. And obviously, there's hundreds of different text effects. And showing them all to you in this tutorial will take a bit long. So I made this extra tutorial, which you can check out right now, where I explain you some more advanced text effects. But for now, let's stick with the basics and make sure you colorize your text a bit and make it pop out. Once we added some color and spice things up, we next want to add our text animation. Because if you play the edit now, you can see the text is just appearing out of nowhere and it doesn't really look that good when it changes. And the animation we want to use for this is called fade up words. Like the name already says, it will fade up word by word and it will add some nice smoothness. Go to your effects and presets and search for fade up words, then drag it onto the first text layer. And for this animation, the waveform you used earlier is going to be very handy. So click back onto your intro layer and press L twice. Now when we select our text layer and press U, you can see there will be two keyframes added by the fade up words effect. The first one is going to be the start of the animation and the second one is going to be the finishing animation. So zoom in and put the first keyframe to where the character starts speaking. If you look at the waveform, all of this is void and the character starts speaking around here. So we're going to drag our keyframe to this exact point. Same thing for the end. You can see everything that comes past here is basically void. So we're going to select the second keyframe and drag it where the character finished speaking, which would be about here. Now our text fades up with the character speaking it. Bruce. But we obviously wanted to fade out again so that the transition between the different texts is smooth. I know, unfortunately, there's no fade out words effect, but what we can do is click onto our layer and then press T on our keyboard. This will bring up the opacity, and if we now go a few frames before our text layer ends, we can set a keyframe and leave the value at 100%. Then go to the end of your text layer right here and set the value to 0%. Now when we play, you will see that our text will fade out again. Bruce. And obviously for the next text layer, we have to add our fading in animation again. So make sure you add fade in and fade out to every text layer you want to use. Once we added the text animations, our edit should already look pretty, pretty cool. But one more thing I want to do for my main editing part is have it play twice. So once the editing part finishes, it's going to replay from the beginning. This is also called a loop. And to do that, we're not going to remake our editing part. All we have to do for that is select all of the clips in our editing part, right click and then go on pre-compose. Make sure the bottom options are selected and then press on OK. And now all of these single clips should be compressed into one layer. By Clicking onto this layer and pressing Ctrl and D, we can duplicate it and now drag the beginning of the top one to the ending of the bottom one. And that way, after the first one is done playing, the second one will start from the beginning. And now the most important part is going to be adding a good color correction. So head to the top and click on layer, then new and select adjustment layer. Make sure you drag the adjustment layer underneath your text layer so they don't get affected by the color correction. And if you don't want to get the exact color correction I use to turn my edits from looking like this into looking like this with just one click, make sure to click the first link in the description because I'm still currently running a huge opportunity in my shop. You can 
can get up to 70% of the presets that I use to make my edits look the best as possible. And on top of that, you can currently still get an extra 10% off. Limited time offer. After we added our high quality color correction, I also want to add a nice transition between the first clip and the editing part. Because right now it looks a bit stiff. And I like to use this white solid transition. So I'm going to go to the top on layer again, click new and select solid. Make sure the color is set to white and then press on OK. Zoom in to see it a bit more clear. And now we're going to go a few frames before our clip transitions. So as you can see, this is our first marker. And we're going to go a solid few frames ahead. Cut the solid layer by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. And then delete what comes before this point. Go back to your beat drop and again move a few frames to the right. Select the layer, cut it out by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. And also delete everything that comes past here. To make the transition, we're going to press T on our keyboard and set a keyframe for 100% at the exact time of our beat drop. Then go to the beginning of the solid layer and put it down to zero. And also go to the end and put it back down to zero. Select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Then open up the graph editor. And in here, we're just going to make it a bit faster at the beginning where it starts. And the second handle, we're going to drag down and keep it a bit tilted so it's linear. Close the graph editor. And lastly, I'm going to import my 3D outro, which I made a full detailed tutorial on. Make sure to watch it right here. And finally, to get this added out of After Effects without losing any quality, we're going to click onto composition and then add to render queue. And here we're going to click onto the output module. And if you have After Effects 2023 or above, you can just use a normal H.264. But if you don't, click onto the format and select quick time. Press on OK, then set your output and lastly, click on render. This might take a while depending on how fast your PC works. And if this tutorial helped you, you have to subscribe. Leave a like and check out the second link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.